Bank Bus 2019 looked at some of the big issues of banking, from moving away from traditional models to custom experience and design, through to AI and expanding global reach. Minimising risk while embracing new technology was the heart of debates about the user experience. I, I think that ultimately all of our clients are looking for everything to be simpler and they're looking for it to be faster. We should all be uh, very open to the idea of, uh, of open banking. Anybody should be allowed to pay anybody instantaneously. We always need to think about, well, how safe are those payments for the end customer? You put in more checks and balances and more friction, you slow real-time payments down so they're no longer real-time. These are two aspects where instant payment might be a game-changer. People expect transparency, you know, Amazon gives it, Domino's Pizza gives it. Uh, if important banking transactions lack that transparency, I think it's a huge issue. One interesting aspect about a startup or a payment startup is the fact that we today exist because banks didn't want to play the space. Uh, now with Swift GPI, I think our existence is getting questioned. Uh, but you know, I, I actually put the question back that as a bank, right, uh, do you really want to do low value payments? I think we often say we need to um, collaborate to innovate, but we also need to collaborate to interoperate better. It almost feels like we are a little bit too involved with payments and talking about new types of payments, new infrastructures, and perhaps not yet focusing sufficiently enough on the end-to-end -end customer journey. If 15 years ago you'd asked people, would they do all their banking with a mobile device, with their telephone? They'd be like, how is that even possible? If you want a real digital experience, you're going to have to have an API. And that's an API from front to back, not just a veneer. Customer expectations are also changing significantly. The most important aspect of that really is around the personalized insight. It's does my institution know me? You know, can they market to me effectively? And can they find the right product and service for me at the right life moment? Certainly now, we're going beyond banking into curating value-added experiences for clients. Big data and leveraging that data was a key issue at the heart of many discussions. Demand for data is growing. We are seeing that across the distribution channels. It's not that data is the new oil, it's the new money. Data is a continuous journey. And I think you know the adage of rubbish in, rubbish out has never applied better to anything than it has applied to data. The focus has been on, on data standards over the past number of years across all banks. Um, and, and they've improved to a very high standard, I would say. And I'd like my banker to actually come back, look at my data, analyze that, and come back and tell me this is the improvement opportunity that you're missing. I think we all feel that our data is just escaping into this uh, world wide web, into places that um, we may or may not want it to be. Well, I think Europe with GDPR has taken a lead and um, you know, setting some guidelines that will give people some comfort uh, that their personal data won't be misused. The issue that Europe, America have got is we want to go around this ethics debate. Okay, and we want to kind of like sort out our, our ethics and our policies and everything else before we do it. But somebody's already going to have done it. Uh, I think the key for a bank is, is not just to, uh, to, to protect data per the law, but to protect data per the customer's expectations, including the things that the customer doesn't know that she or he should be concerned about. Right. Staying on top of cybersecurity threats was another major theme. I'm a great believer that Protecting our customers is not competitive space because mm -hmm. we all need to do it. And if we all do it to the best of our ability mm -hmm. with the best technologies, then, we, then we, we're going to hold strong against, against crime. I think it's breaking down the silos between banks. Is there a need for every bank to repeat the same process in the chain? I think we could do a lot more sharing in the fraud space. The purpose of money laundering is to move money from institution A to institution B to institution C. So you're really not necessarily going to see something within a single institution. An army of one will not win a cyber war. We do see an increase in, in technology complexity and the attacks are increasing in sophistication as well. Quite frankly, this is not a problem uh, that can be solved by any individual firm. We're all connected with each other. Sharing data between the banks, I think, will really help drive financial crime and compliance forward. There was a lot of discussion about how the industry can respond to changing geopolitical and regulatory priorities. A few years ago, you had criminal actors on one side and nation state actors on the other. They're working together now. Market disruption attacks, type of attacks, are the ones 
that states are really worried about. You know, we talk about trade wars and the emergence of a multipolar world. Where we are, let's face it, moving into a new world order, uh, which is impacting trade patterns. It is critical not to let the bad guys win by taking advantage of this fragmented landscape around legal requirements. The, the shift we see in who is going to be in this payment space is, I think, fundamentally going to change the role of regulation about large firms on a global level. How do we make sure that uh, the way uh, regulation is uh, enforced in one country is the same as in, in another country? Now is the opportunity to start designing and security for the digital channels of the future. The solutions that are being designed in this space are being designed with regulation in mind. I think, frankly, in lots of things in the world, people don't fully trust each other. Any technology that helps us synchronize our information and keep it clean and keep it consistent mm -hmm. becomes a big, uh, big win. A key element in all discussions was remembering that human beings were still at the center of the banking business. Is there a, a clear view as to what skills will be needed um, in, in 10 years' time? I would say absolutely not. Um, is there an evolving view? I would say absolutely yes. There's so a lot of fear about how AI will impact jobs, and there's no question it will. You know, World Economic Forum, I think, did a study that shows AI will impact maybe 75, up to 75 million jobs, but it will also create uh, uh, a new set of jobs, up to 133 million jobs, right? And one thing you see in all of this, and we truly believe this at Google, is uh, ultimately it's better to create AI systems that enhance human performance, that enhance the decision maker instead of trying to replace them. The very best companies that we worked with, our best partners, realized that learning was not just about the person that came into the office, but it was also about the person that went home at night. It's very important that we try and connect our colleagues with the purpose of the organization. Machines should do the ordinary to enable people to do the extraordinary. Mm -hmm.